What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We're talking about how to get business now, uh, which is not typically something we talk about a lot, but we have a, a specific <laughs> strategy. We've got a class coming out for that. Where we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about uh, some questions about you know what what is a lead, how to follow up on leads, and uh, what, uh, what types of people are going to be those that actually have a chance of getting now a business and just kind of that whole approach to things. Uh, so first of all, the junior grandmaster himself, the co-pilot, what is up today? What up, Johnson? Hey, man, you and I had an awesome morning this morning. We did our, our final class of uh, Rockstar Prospecting. We're shelving that for a little bit at this point. Um, and just because we're going to bring out Getting Now Biz, our new product, we're going to talk about it, like you said, today. Uh, but we class. also... Training class. I always say product. But whenever I say, I don't know why you say product, product. It's not a product. I don't know. I don't know. My mind just training goes out. I don't know. So training live, 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 live training class um, that we're gonna be able to hang out with some cool peeps on. And then we work with prime seller leads. Got we've got to work with those amazing women over there. And they have just what they set like nearly 50 appointments last last week or 40 something odd appointments. I mean just yeah, 30, 35. Some mm -hmm. rock star number of, of, of appointments that they set. Um, so super pumped to be working with them and just watching that their growth explode. And then, Matt, do you know what happened last night? What's up? What I became an uncle for the sixth time over. Very excited about that. I, little baby Cora was born. She is, well, how big was she? Seven pounds, 13 ounces, healthy, happy. Everybody's doing well. Mom's good. Baby's good. The whole nine yards. So... Today's good, man. Very busy. Very busy. Not that productive right now, but they're very freaking busy. <laughs> you, know, you and I were joking around about this earlier. <clears throat> it feels like we're very extremely busy, but nothing on lead generation, sadly. Nothing. It's all income servicing, not income generation. Yeah, what in the f is going on? But anyways, well, I'm, well, I'm glad to be here. We're going to talk. We're going to some good stuff. Um, and the good thing is my, uh, <laughs> the, my buyer, uh, my investment buyer that I found cold calling, yes, Cold calling, uh, she called me back. She wants to go through, forward with the deal on one of our properties. And my seller, who backed out of, the, out of the deal on Friday, called me back this morning and wants back in. So, good day. Nice. That is a good day. Yeah, it is, I think. All right. Well, let's take a quick question, then we'll get into uh, what else is going on and what else we're thinking about when it comes to getting out business. So, first of all, this question from the Lead Gen Scription Objections Facebook group. This is Guillermo Serafin. Uh, try saying that five times fast. Guillermo Serafin, Guillermo Serafin, Guillermo Serafin, I can't do Yeah, that. that's right. You got, you got two and a half in there. All <laughs> right, so it says, today's objections, homes are selling so fast that I don't need a realtor. I'll just sell it by myself by posting my home on Zillow. It says, I, I hear this all the time now. I have a script that communicates value. My, you know, my response will be in the comments, but I'm curious what uh, what other perspectives other people have. So I'm sure you get this and have gotten this in the past because you have that situation come up. You're in an extreme seller's market in the Bay Area. So when you run across something like that, essentially it's just a disguised version of I'm going to do it on my own, but with the caveat that, that like that it actually works. Like we've heard this from around the country where Hump Fizbos actually are selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. I mean, it really comes down to, I mean, I, I just put my house on the market. Great. If you're just going to put your house on the market, you know, what happens, you know, when it comes to the TDS, who should fill that out? And what about the, the, the contract? Who signs on what areas and do who pays for what aspects in, in the terms? Do, what's standard here in the area, Mr. Home Seller? Hmm. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> that's funny don't okay that's cool it's kind of like me having my own job like selling houses and shit and you like do whatever you do so why don't we work together on on average nationally um i actually make can help you get net forty thousand dollars more than if you try to sell it yourself and my legal team can help protect you in case something goes wrong with the disclosures like if uh if you forgot to tell us cut the pipes leak 10 years ago and since you painted over the mold you forgot about it oops you know one of those pesky little things <laughs> I'm guessing that's a little bit of a uh, real-world experience there, Greg. Uh, yes, it is, Matt, because one of my clients recently goes, oh, there's mold there. We'll just, like, paint over it. I'm like, no. Holy mm -hmm. Christ, for the love of everything, no. <laughs> that's called a disclosure <laughs> issue. And what's legal, what's not legal. I mean, all these different things. But, yeah, sometimes people do have the idea because they watch too much HGTV and you think everything can be done simply and easily and all, in, all by themselves, when in reality that's not the case. Okay. And so for Guillermo – um, I would say, look, you got to be out there and you got to be able to identify the pain points. You know, think people sell by fear or get sold by fear. Why do you think the news is so negative? Why do you think all the front pages of everything is negative? Scandals, you know, you know, divorce, incest, you know, well, not incest. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. my God. 
<laughs> wow. I was gonna say like Man. like people sleeping around and stuff like that. Not not in not interfamily, but uh, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But um. Okay. But it's because people go away from fear as fast as possible. So f- scare the living shit out of the homeowners in a good way so you can help protect them so they don't step in a big pack of mirtha and then they have to dig their way out of it. So that, that would be my recommend- recommendation to them. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, I don't know that I have anything specific because I've never encountered that that situation. So I can't really offer like a specific uh, objection to that. I will say this, that if you don't have your ducks in a row on the marketing end in terms of knowing what value you bring and why mm. any seller in any situation should go with you over, uh, you know, over the competition, which includes themselves. Like you should have your ducks in a row to, to the point where you understand your value and know what that is going mm-hmm. into that situation. Cause it shouldn't matter whether it's extreme sellers market. Cause really what that, what they're saying is when, when you say, well, Fizbo's are selling and things are flying off the shelves, that's great. The problem is, like you said, Greg, when they actually get an offer, how in the world do they fill out the paperwork? And if they just go out and hire an attorney, let's say they get an attorney, who does that attorney represent? Mm-hmm. Right? Is he representing both? Is he just representing you? If so, does the buyer have an attorney? Because if they don't, does that not make it easier for them to come back and sue later that they were misled on certain things? Does the attorney work with this stuff all the time? Is that all they do day in, day out is real estate law? Or do they are they corporate law and they just do this on the side for you? Right. So there's all, all those kinds of uh, all those kinds of concerns. So you should know going in like, hey, you know, we get this much. Here's what we do to market properties. Here's why we're going to find you a better buyer at better terms. And here's why we're going to negotiate a much more favorable deal than you can get on your own, because this is all I do all day, every day. I'm a professional at this. And the other part of that is, do you have a full time job? I love this. Aaron says this. Do you have a full time job? Well, yes. Well, would you like another one? <laughs> oh, <no>. so, oh. <laughs> which is a great a great question and answer exchange i love that because it's getting to the point of hey would you like to have would you like to spend the equivalent of a full-time job supervising and fielding calls from all these people that want to go through your home if it's reasonably priced this mm-hmm. is a seller's market there's not a lot of inventory out there so you're going to get a ton of people that want to come through your home would you like to be the one to personally show them? Would you like to be the one to personally follow up with all their lenders and make sure they're actually qualified to come through your home? So yeah, if you get the chance, like that's where you need to be able to know, like what is my value? And here's my value. And here's why even in a seller's market, even if you get an offer quickly, here's why you'd still want to have a professional represent you because there's so many things that can potentially go wrong that most, that there's just no way to know about it unless you swim in these waters every day. Yeah, when you and I were filming one of our last products, not classes, but a product, yes. uh, you and I got in quite a, a heated debate in regards to if there is a normal deal or not a normal deal. And uh, like you just alluded to, the fact every deal is completely different. There is nothing, there is no normal anything in real estate except for the fact that everything is going to be not normal and not, you know, not the same. Because you could have the perfect buyer, and, you know, from heaven, like Matt Julian and his three little obese wood denting, you know, insulin sucking little babies could come into the house and one could fall through the subfloor. And that's mm-hmm. that's not a normal occurrence. That's not a normal deal. But they they were fine before. Or realistically, let's say you and Julie were so excited about the fact that you guys bought a brand new house, you decided to celebrate. Go go go, and you went out and bought yourself a land yacht, aka a humongous ass RV, right before the close of escrow. The bank did last last minute you know condition checks, and they found out your DTI or debt to income was through the fucking roof because you decided to go all redneck on me. And go travel the travel all the you know civil war you know monuments all around the country. Not that that's wrong, but I mean that's what people do. They just don't know what not to do right when they need, don't need to do it. Mm-hmm. What are you reading? I was going back through the uh, the lead gen description objections, looking for our next question, which I believe I found it. Uh, so Alex McCormick asks, what is everybody's opinion on Facebook advertising? I'm wondering if it's already a saturated market here in Austin, Texas. Does anybody else work in a tech city and what are your thoughts? Well, the answer to that is, oh my God, yes. Is it a saturated market? Home to the Keller Williams headquarters. The answer is yes. Uh, but that question on like everyone, you know, the uh, opinion on Facebook advertising, a good segue into what we wanted to talk about in terms of like, what is a lead, right? Mm -hmm. So Facebook advertising is good if you want to generate leads, but what are leads? So Greg, let's talk about that for a second. So to your mind, what is a lead? So a lead is a respondent to some sort of form of advertisement that has been put out there, postcard, uh, you know, newspaper ad, it could be a Facebook ad, it could be a sign, it could be anything that is 
picked up their interest and they decided to get and respond to your marketing. That does not mean that they are actually, they are, go, they are a prospect at that point. So it goes lead, suspect, prospect, active client, close, and then close and pass client. You know, so listen to that verbiage, lead, suspect, prospect, active client, past client, because you got, you have got to warm them up and nurture with them and drip on them and get them rocking and rolling to help them see the value and why they need to hire you. So that is what a lead is. And that, that has been browbeat into my head by my father to the fact that I'm like, yeah, we got a ton of leads. He's like, no, Greg, we got a ton of respondents. I'm like, no, we got leads. He's like, no, we got respondents. I'm like, so what does that mean? He's like, well, it means it don't mean shit <laughs> until you can actually nurture them through the entire process. I'm like, Oh, I get it. That's why everybody on online leads, everyone thinks like, oh my God, it's an online lead. It's piping hot, ready to rock and roll. No. Matt, what you found is that it takes 33 online leads to get one suspect, which then will turn into a prospect, which will then turn into an active lead. But you found well, it is one in 33, right? I am getting yes, that math right. One in 33, yeah, for Jeff Cohn's team, you know, right. deals last year across 100,000 calls plus made. One out of every 30, one out of every 33 actual online registrants on their uh, system will end up turning into a deal. And you should probably keep that number kind of going all the way through everything. I mean, just just don't view those as active, active, hot prospects. Yeah. A real a, a lead is just someone you're going to start off with. It's like a first date, man. You got to mm -hmm. see if you can get the second date. And the second date is going to be, you know, a, a prospect, a prospect of someone you're in. You, know, you got the criteria. They've been pre-approved. They may or not be ready to go. Then they take the leap. And then now they're an active client. Then they get it, buy a house. And then they go into a past client follow-up status where you go and do the parties and everything else that we've talked about. So yeah. I guess Matt, you'd really need to look at it as, as just an opportunity to nurture and follow up. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what we're like, that's what we <laughs> talk about in, in this whole like get now business uh, class that we're doing that starts next week. Um, so guys go to getnowbusiness.com. But the whole point of that is that you want to start conversations and you want to have conversations that end up converting into clients. Right? So the thing is that a lead is like they have raised their hand, in some form or fashion and just expressed interest. Like that's all they've done, especially if it's like an online lead. So like we've been training uh, the guys from Prime Seller Leads on how to, how to better close the, gals, the people the that gals. are. Well, the yeah, gals. You know I mean. uh, the gals, fine, they're, they're, that's, yes, they're all girls. <laughs> um, but we've been training them on how to make the follow-up calls off of the leads that come in off their, off their own websites, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Essentially what they are is they're people that have gone to a website and they have you know, plopped in their address in exchange for a home value report. So we know that they're interested. We don't know exactly what they're interested in yet until they make those calls. You don't know. They could just be interested in refinancing. They could have just spotted their neighbor's home, go up for sale or just sold, and they might just be curious because they're curious and nosy about their own home value. Yes, they or are. they could be thinking of you know, legitimately selling. Right. So my parents would be in that category. They've been thinking of selling for two years. And they would mm -hmm. be the one of the ones that would go onto a site and just because in their mind, everything that they want rides off of how much can I get from my house that that is that is the thing that's at the very forefront of their mind. That's what they think is the key to making this whole thing work is getting the most out of their out of their house. So they could be like that. You don't know that until you call them. Right. So the difference between that, a just a raw lead or mm -hmm. like what your dad would call a respondent, um, once you make that phone call and you figure out, oh, this person, you know, you've got this group of people, they're, they're just curious, they're tire kickers, they're this, they're that, throw all those out. What you're left with is what I would call marketing or, well, actually, this would be sales qualified lead in the sense that you've called them and you've confirmed that they're interested, right? Mm -hmm. That's a sales qualified lead. Now that's actually someone that you'd want to put in your pipeline and start to communicate with and nurture, potentially go out and meet in person if you're the agent and all this stuff. But we were talking about it earlier, like people have, they have such a misconception. What they, what they want is they want somebody to come along and serve them fresh, hot, warm appointments with people that are ready to do something now. That is a very, very tiny percentage of mm. anyone. Only three percent online leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only three percent. You have a ninety-seven percent fail rate when you're out there. Or ninety-seven percent of the people are not ready to do something now, which is good. I mean, imagine if everybody came on the market. We drown the market. We'd flood the market, and then our prices would all plummet. So it's actually a really good thing. It's a nice little even balance. But I mean, yeah, 
I just think the most important thing, Matt, is that at the end of the day, people, hopefully you can, guys and gals that are watching this right now or watching on the replay, go back into your database and identify people that are active clients, people that are prospects, people that are suspects, and then people that are just leads. And I mean, people are just tire kickers, maybe put them on a monthly you know, drip campaign just to say hi so that your name stays in front of them, but don't take a whole lot of time spending with them. Even if the lead, lead air quotes, so for everyone on iTunes and Stitcher, uh, it, it looks really hot and sexy because if, they're, if, if it's a great looking lead, like, oh my God, like a $2 million house and they wanna go buy something. Well, maybe you have to wait three years for their high school daughter to graduate to go to college. So you don't wanna you know, follow up with them you know, heavily until you know, 2.75 years later. So they're, when they're ready to actively go, but you wanna drip on them cont continuously so they can continue to see your information. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of people, you know, the categories A, B, C, and D leads. These are your monthly drip campaigns, and basically they're in the, in the in the trash pile, but they're not in the trash pile. These are you know high the highest priority ones out of all the leads that you have. So mm -hmm. if you guys haven't categorized your leads, I strongly encourage your asses to get back there and start uh, doing some recalibrating recalibrating um, all the people that you've been working with and following up with, and kind of screw your brain on right to know that look you know just just because it's an online lead does not mean it's piping hot at all. I mean, at all. Yeah, yeah, and and it's getting worse in the sense that, the, and we talked about this on the episode with Frank from Viral Marketing. So the online lead registration numbers are going up, 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 up. The home ownership level is down, ticking down a little bit. So what that means is that you're having more and more and more registrations from people that are interested and they're looking at their home value and they're looking for homes online. They're registering at all these different sites because they don't know or care or understand what's happening. So there, there's many, many, many more of the same people being registered as leads on everybody else's sites. Now there's some things coming down the pipe that might help that. Uh, there's mm. some companies that are trying to prevent that in the sense that when they get a lead through their system, it routes back to the person who they originally registered on their site. But but there, there's only so much that can be done about that. And so we're being flooded by all these leads and, and these individual people that are looking at for information online are coming up in three or four or five different agent systems as leads and everybody's supposed to be calling them within a couple of minutes. Of course, that's not happening. Thank God. Because yeah. um, most people don't, uh, they don't, they don't take that step. But once, if you let that opportunity go and you're not getting in touch with them right away, then there's five other agents who have that person's contact information who is also just kind of lackadaisically picking up the phone whenever they feel like it to get back to them, right? So you don't really own that lead, uh, number one. And number two, that person is so far upstream now, uh, they're you know any, anywhere on average between 12 to 18, sometimes even 24 months out from doing anything. Mm -hmm. And so that is like, that is the long game. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a numbers game. It's purely a numbers game and it's a waiting game. Mm -hmm. Right. And that you just have to understand that going in. And that's one of the, the, the more frustrating parts of like coaching um, agents on how to make those calls or coaching agents who are paying for those services where they get those leads or they get those appointments is that even if you get somebody to set the appointments for you, if you go into the appointment with the wrong mindset, you go into it thinking like this person's hot and ready and you get there and they're not, you're going to be disappointed. The fault isn't theirs and the fault isn't the company that set the appointment for you. The fault is yours. It's your expectations. Mm -hmm. Everything's an expectation. Everyone has that. It's an assumption. Assumptions are the mother of all fuck ups. First off, um, you know, some, you know, you assume that when someone comes on, logs onto your, your page or whatever else, Chris Smith, you know, said this, and we had Chris on our show a while back, guys, but I was listening to him talk um, a little snippet on Facebook, and he, did, he made a wonderful point. He's like, look, the reason why you got to get back to someone so quickly is because within three to five minutes, they're not going to be just your lead. They're going to be like three to four or, or maybe even five or six other people's leads. So mm -hmm. like it's, it's speed of recontact. Re and then it's just the quality of follow-up that you're going to do and what kind of value you're going to bring to them. So don't take it. And if you're an hour late guys, dude, you, you basically paid for a DOA lead dead on arrival. Cause it, don't, it doesn't mean shit anymore because they've already mm -hmm. moved on. You're, you're no longer valuable or, or relevant to them because they found someone that showed up to the party faster than you did and brought them the value. So those of you who are buying the leads out there, get your shit together and start fucking following up a lot faster than what you're doing. You will make more money. Matt, you and I were talking about, you know, we showed our, our spreadsheet that every, anyone who comes to any of our classes, guys, gets the spreadsheet, a tracking sheet. 
So mm -hmm. the Get Now Business people, we're going to show you guys how to use a spreadsheet. Um, you know, the Rockstar Prospecting class that just ended today, they got the spreadsheet, but it shows you the minute, the hour, the what the lead is worth to you, what you're worth an hour, and then what, what, what every lead is worth to you. And by adjusting an hour up, a day up, an hour down, or maybe your conversion rate from five to seven percent, or add in a couple of weeks a year to, that you're working that you take vacations on, or moving your price point up by fifty thousand. How it dramatically affects the amount of money you can make. Mm -hmm. But it also talks about how fast you need to respond. That all you know, how many deals you can do based upon you know the, the amount of leads you get. Well, that how many goes deals to your conversion get. rate. Exactly yeah. right. If you, you respond you pick faster, that up. your conversion rate will go up without you actually working harder in any yeah. harder. Now, if you're if you're like me and you're not interested in responding quickly, then don't buy leads. I mean, that's that's the easy solution to that. There's other ways to generate leads rather than like online buyer leads. But if you're going to pay for them, um, yeah, if, if you're not dedicated to making the calls within that first five minutes, you really are just essentially be better off go partnering with another agent and just calling their old leads. Uh, and because at that point, it's a total crapshoot. So you might as well not pay for the leads, offer to call through somebody else's and just split the split the percentage with them uh, and not pay for, for the leads. Yeah, I mean, that, and we're, that's, what, that's the whole thing about, you know, Get Business Now product is, guys, it's going to be under $500 a budget, a, mo a monthly budget on marketing or, is it, or just in real estate and no door knocking, no cold calling. Mm -hmm. Are you fucking kidding me? How would you not want to learn that? I mean, every person I've talked to, you know, d does not like to do cold door knocking or cold prospecting in any way, shape, or form. And I think we, I think honestly, Matt, we may have found the the, the the secret, you know, button on this one a little bit, at least on prospecting. I mean, not on real estate as a whole, but just mm -hmm. taking away the major pain points. And that's right. of how to generate, yeah, business as quickly as possible, clients that close as quickly as they possibly can, that puts money into your pocket. Um, without going the cold the cold door knocking cold calling route yeah absolutely yeah so guys here i'm putting in to the link right now um get business now it's gonna say get now business .com. get now business yeah whatever Dyslex dyslexia yeah. kicking in uh, <laughs> it's there in the link guys uh go ahead and take a click on that if you're interested in learning about it look yeah we're we're pushing it a little bit because this is something that needs to be pushed we're pushing this because yeah, this is what you guys it's ask just for. too much it's way too much depth than we can go into in the show like we have a lot of fun on <laughs> the show and stuff but god this is like this content is like way too much uh, for us to go in on the show um but let's take another question because it kind of follows yeah. along with what we've been talking about linda demoro said uh someone i know just reached out for real estate advice on buying a house and then i found out they're already looking at houses What's the best approach to find out if they're already working with another agent, and if not, to get them on board with me? Okay, so the friend reached out to get advice, but they're already looking at houses, and she doesn't know if they have another agent. She thinks they might be, right? Right, right. All right, I'm going to – this is revolutionary. Revolutionary. <laughs> Matt? Yes, Greg? Matt, are you working with another agent to help you find houses? No, Greg, I'm not. Well, great. I'd love to be that agent. Okay, that's fantastic. All right. Revolutionary. You yeah. asked the fucking question. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Calm yourself. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, people just take it so, so they, they, they over fucking think this stuff so much. Mm hmm. Just well, here's here's the deal, guys. So it goes back, to, and the second part of this question is, if not, how do I get them on board with working with me? That goes back to up. understanding your value, understanding the answer, and having an answer to the question, why should I work with you versus anybody else that's out there? If you don't have a good answer to that question, it's going to be very tough for you, outside of just the personal relationship, uh, to get someone on board with working with you if they've already been seeing homes with somebody else. And of course, you don't want to like pull them away from another agent. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, if there's, you know, at that point, if they, if you, if they say they've looked at homes of somebody else, then you would, the natural question would be great. Have you signed like a buyer agency agreement so that they know that you're the one agent they're working with? And if not, and regardless of what the answer is, you can always follow up with say, you know, I'm just curious why, like, why are, why are you reaching out? We're just looking for a second opinion on top of what your agent is telling you, right? Because uh, if they're just reaching out to you for for advice as a friend or something to see if their agent, you know, whatever, get, answer their question or give them some advice and move on. But if they don't have an agent, they don't have uh, or they don't have a buyer agency agreement, then, you know, I don't see anything wrong with at least saying like, well, I can I'm certainly willing to give you a second opinion. And if you like what I do and you like my approach to helping buyers find the home of their dreams, then potentially we can go look at some homes together. But you have to know what that answer is. Right. So. 
let's talk that through for a second, Greg. Like when when you kind of make that proposition to a buyer, mm -hmm. you have a certain set of things. Like we we've talked about kind of what your value proposition is to a seller, right? You've got your brochure, you've got your team, and yada yada, all the experience. What's your value proposition to a buyer about why they should work with Greg versus any other door monkey that can uh, open a lockbox? <laughs> <laughs> I love that phrase. Dude, I just remember seeing Tom Ferry do that. He just stuck his butt to the audience and wiggled his butt around like he was like the agent, like opening the lockbook, like, hi guys. So like, what's going on? He's just wiggling his butt. And I was just like, ugh, nobody wants to see your butt, man. Ugh. <laughs> That's always telling my buyers, hey, look at the shades of that house over there. And I'm like, open the door. Oh, man. Um, so guys, this would be super, super simple. Why, Matt, why are you, Julie, your three obese little wood denting, insulin sucking little babies, big babies, not little babies, nothing's little about that, those kids. All when right. you're big, big, All right. big, All big right. bone baby elephants. All right. They're big um, bone. Stop it. Big bone baby elephants. Ah, that's another phrase that's getting tacked onto them. Uh, <laughs> any of you, anybody with body complexes, like, what the fuck is wrong with this asshole? Um, but here's the question, Matt. Matt, Julie, hey, I know anybody can show you anything that's out there. But I'm actually a little bit unique. I actually have access to a secret MLS, the properties that aren't on the market, the people that are actually wanting to sell. And I can tap into that and see if there's if some of them might, you know, fit your wants and needs. Would that would that be valuable to you? Well, yeah, absolutely. Great. Let, let's sit down and talk about what you're looking for. There's your value add right there. Just bam. Don't fuck around. Dude, I got, I got, I'm like James Bond of real estate. I got the inside scoop. I got the, all the special tools and skills that nobody else has or doesn't, they don't know what to do with it. So, you know, I got, I got, I got a secret MLS. And I know people that aren't even on the MLS that are thinking about selling. You guys want to get in on that? You guys want to go against all those multiple offers? You just, yeah, come with me. We'll go do it. We'll go this way. We'll go through the, the secret hatch, basically. That's the value add right there. I mean, you can wow them with all the, the stats that you want to, but ultimately at the end of the day, you're a problem solver as a real estate agent. You're solving the problem of them buying, not being able to buy a house or getting beat out on multiple offers or maybe not being consultated in the proper manner of saying, look, buy what you need, not what you want. Because a lot of people want a grandiose idea of a house, right? I want like 15 bedrooms, 12 and a half bathrooms, sitting on 300 acres with my own stables and blah, 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 blah. It's like, you're a single man that travels a lot. Are you sure you want all that? Well, uh, you bring up a good point. Yeah. You know, bitch, why don't you just get a two-bedroom house? You can use the whole thing. Oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from the guy who used to have rooms he would walk into once a month just to say he walked into them. So, yep. a little, a little speaking from experience again today, Greg. Speaking yes. from serious experience. All right. It is, man. I, seriously, I, I would have like I, I lived by I was like years ago. I was a single bachelor. I just walk in, walk out. I could see my my tracks in my in the dust. In the, I'm like, oh. I'll let those fog over and I'll go back in there when I can't see them again. <laughs> uh, footprints in the dust. <laughs> oh, man. All right, there's a poem there. I might write that someday. All right. Oh uh, Richard Hauf asks, okay, folks, need some help? I'm a new real estate agent with an extensive database of contacts, 3,500 plus, that I've personally previously serviced over the past five years in my previous business. Uh, he wants to send every, every one of them, 300 a month starting today, a letter, explain, you know, kind of an intro letter that he's in real estate now. Uh, he's also going to drop each of them a voicemail through slide broadcast, mm -hmm. letting them know that they'll get a letter. So I want to ask you about that, Greg. So question number one is how would I script the voicemail message and then anything else to include in the script uh, when following up with them? So let's tackle that, that, that whole slide broadcast thing first, because on the face of it, sounds like a great idea, right? So what's what's the... What's the disadvantage? Why do you immediately say no? Let's clarify. These are database. These are contacts from a previous business. So they know them. Taking over. So he knows them potentially, or has sold them, has some sort of business relationship with them in the past. So does that make a difference at all? Okay. So guys, slide broadcast is the the holy grail to real estate, but it's also a very illegal holy grail to real estate. Um, this is what I used prior to it becoming illegal. Just I want to make that clear. I was using it when it was legal. But what you would do is you'd go in and you can, like if I didn't want to talk to Matt or if Matt didn't want to talk to me, very typical, he would just, but we wanted to do a phone call, he would just use slide dial and you just type in the number and type in using their system and it would go right past the ringer, right to the voicemail. I see that that could be, and I am CYA clause, you guys need to check it out yourself in regards to how you would do this. Uh, do not take my word as gospel by any way, shape, or form in regards to slide broadcast. Uh, you need to vet it out yourself for your own 
you know, for your own, talk to your attorneys, talk to everything before you use it. Make sure that you are within the means of the law, and then if you are, move forward and use it. But uh, if you could drop, you know, 500 voicemails like that, which you can do, by the way, it's fucking awesome. Right. Um, and then just get callbacks. That's that is literally dropping a stick of dynamite in a uh, in a barrel of fish and going fishing. Um, so I mean, make sure that you're within the law, and then go for it if you are. And what was the other question? I got so wrapped up on slide broadcast. Yeah, that's all right. So the question is, um, well, let's say he shifted to like calling these people himself, just picking up the phone and dialing with his uh, nugget, as you as you say, for your finger. Um, and he doesn't get them to pick up, which would be, you know, a good 50 or 75 percent of the time. Um, yeah. If he wanted to leave a message where he's actually delivering himself, what what would you put in that message for a new agent announcing to the database that they are in real estate? Hey, Matt, it's Greg. Long time no chat, my friend. Totally my fault. Hey, anyways, man, just wanted to reach out and touch base with you. Um, wanted to buy you lunch or a cup of coffee or something, brother. When you get a moment, give me a holler. Let's get this thing booked up. Hope you and Julie are doing well and the kids are recovering from the last diabetic shock. But uh, I trust that you will not be force feeding them Twinkies anymore. So, hey, look forward to talking to you, man. We'll go get some health food. Later. Bye. Click. Minus the, you know, slandering of his, you know, over obese children. It's basically just a reconnection of, you know, uh, of getting to get, get getting together because they're going to want to talk to you, uh, ho hopefully, if they, if they actually still like you um, and be able to just reconnect with them and then, and then use the Ford method, family, occupation, recreation and dreams and just take them through the, you know, Ford all over them at lunch or at coffee, not in an awkward and weird way, but, you know, in a nice, normal way. But drawing questions out, they're going to ask, eventually ask about you and they're going to say, well, you know what, what's new with me? Well, um, well, I fall, I fall, I'm following my passion. You know, you know, I talked about it a lot later earlier, you know, I'm, I'm, I got into real estate full time and I just love it. You know, I just, it's a freedom and everything is unbelievable. And well, speaking of that, you know, anyone, you know, that's thinking about buying or selling or anyone I should talk to, or maybe get advice to boom. Okay. That's how, that's how I do it. Okay. That's how you get, get together with people there. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's not hard guys. It's very simple, but, but it's, you know people don't want to do it because they're afraid of the rejection. Mm -hmm. That's how you know, I was talking to somebody the, somebody the other day, and they were I was harping on them like, dude, you've got to ask for what you want. If you do not ask for what you want, you will never get it. This person was like, well, I don't want to get rejected. And I'm like, yeah, that's part of life, but at least you got to put yourself out there to get the acceptance or the rejection. And this person was just like, well, I don't want to get rejected. I'm like, God damn it, I know we none of us do. But you have to ask. And that's all it is, guys. Just moving these th things called lips and going, are you thinking about buying or selling? And that's it. That's it. <laughs> all <laughs> right. And what would <laughs> – well, one of the things we covered in um, – oh, we covered in Getting Out Business – and then we're also covering it in this this course we're putting together for new agents. We talk about like how to kind of solve that problem of not feeling like you have the credibility to ask, right? Because I think mm -hmm. that's what a lot of new agents or agents who are kind of starting over, if you're kind of parachuting into a new area, maybe you know real estate, but you don't know the area, whatever it is, like maybe there's some mental blocks that are holding you back to where you feel awkward asking because you feel like you don't have the credibility to ask. Um, there is a way around that, and that's with putting out content. We show you how to do that. So just know that um, like in that course, we get into that a little bit in the sense that it's not just about asking and faking it. There is a way that you can legitimately like build your credibility to the point where you are more comfortable asking for those referrals, right? Right. Okay, so totally go Disney on your ass for a second. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what kind of mood I was in, but I, I watched the movie Finding Dory over the weekend. Um, the Disney movie about the yeah uh, I don't know. alone <laughs> alone by yourself, Craig? <laughs> yes, man, by my fucking by self. By yourself. All but right. there is a lesson to be learned here from the little blue fish named Dory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you did you forget it? Because that would be amazingly ironic. Wait, what? What movie? What yeah, movie? Exactly. I don't get it. Uh -huh. No, so so here here's the point that in Finding Dory that I want to bring into this. Anyone who hasn't seen this, uh, she's a fish, and she forgets, like, she's like 10-second Tom. You know, she's like, hi, my name's Dory. Hi, my name's Dory. So the thing is, she just does things without really thinking them through because she doesn't know the consequences. She just kind of just 
bulldozes through life, right? Okay. And at one point, you know, Nemo and his dad were trying to find ne Dory, and they were like, well, what would Dory do? Well, she would just go for it and just do it. She wouldn't overthink it. I think that's something really powerful there in regards to the way that we think as real estate agents, we overthink this shit so fucking much. It's painful. It's a detriment to our bottom line, to our life, to our happiness, to our business, to everything else, because we're always thinking, what if, ooh, what if, ooh, what if, ooh, what if, fuck your what ifs. Just jump, man. It, I mean, if it's off a bridge, don't do it. But if it's jumping and asking someone for business or taking that one thing, just go for it. Mm -hmm. it that's the worst case scenario. Is, is no, we're not going to buy. No, we're not going to sell. Whatever else. Just don't, just be Dory, man. Just just be ignorant to what the, what the negative consequences could be. And say, hey, you thinking about buying? Thinking about selling? Nobody's thinking about buying? You know, anything like that? That's the hardest part about it, is overthinking it. Well, like my friend was talking, was complaining about over the weekend. Like, well, I'm, maybe I'll get rejected. Maybe you will. But you didn't know it going in, so you're expecting it to be a success. So then the positive energy that you're putting through, like, hey, you guys know anyone's buying or selling? It's not, it's it's that versus like, so, uh, like, uh, do you know any? Do you want you what you you don't you don't know? No, you wouldn't know anyone's thinking of no. Positive, you don't know anyone's thinking. No, you're not thinking of selling. Buying. Are you? Forget I asked. <laughs> well, you, you, you didn't even bring that up. Did he you just it? shoulder roll through a plate glass window and run down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah but that's the thing is it's not like if you put yourself in a position where where you think of yourself like what what would i how would i behave if i were already super successful you would ask that question mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be attached to the outcome right because you already have enough business like that's the way like try to put yourself and imagine what that would feel like if you just go yeah you know like uh, if there's anybody that you know that's looking to buy or sell i'd love to talk to them you know, here's here's my ideal client. I would love to know what what yours is because I want to keep an eye out for you too. But here's what I'm looking for. And mm -hmm. just tell them what you're looking for. I mean, that's that's one of the things I loved about Jeff Cohn and his approach to how he got into the business. And I wish I would have imitated this. I, I was clear about who I wanted to work with, but I wasn't clear about training my database on who I wanted to work with. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where Jeff beat me out. And he's a freaking genius in the sense that he trained his database on what he was looking for, like who that who they could look out for and why he worked with them specifically mm -hmm. right so they had mm -hmm. so they were kind of like they had that uh, reticular activating system going in oh, the right. sense that when they're out and about they would you know he, they he they knew what he was looking for they knew like who he wanted to work with and it registers in your brain it's not just oh jeff's in real estate or greg's in real estate they work with anybody everywhere all the time anybody uh, right. You want to give them something specific and you want to be clear about it for yourself. You want to know who you're looking to work with. That way you can ask other people who their ideal clients are and you can tell them who you're looking for. That way if they go, oh, well, that, that dude, that's me. Like that's I have a wife and two kids and I need a, a, another bedroom on my house. Well, mm -hmm. great. You know, but what if that's not them? Still great. They know a bunch of people that are and they can actually keep an eye out for them now that you tell them what you're looking for. Um, I just yeah. figured out a great idea, Matt. Mm. I found out a great lead source. Lamaze classes. Fucking genius. I say fucking genius. Okay. The baby on board, dude. They're going to need more room. Why this is this? I never thought about this. Because you and I don't go to Lamaze classes, Greg. <laughs> That's why you've never thought about this before. Wait, you do, you don't do those on, I'm you a little disturbed those. that you thought about it at all. You don't do those on Saturday afternoons at 2? Oh, no, God, I do not. Down at the community center? No. <laughs> so you know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing based on every sitcom I've ever seen <laughs> that all, all Lamaze classes are run by women in their 50s at the community center. But that's all I know <laughs> about Lamaze classes and, and possibly all I ever will know. But anyway, um, <laughs> so it's what what's interesting is um, – so, guys, I produce a podcast called Legends and Losers, which you guys could, should go check out immediately. The host of that show has been on yeah. our show before, Chris Lockhead. He is phenomenal, and the show is amazing. Super cool. They just interviewed Stanley McChrystal, uh, General Stanley McChrystal, whose episode is coming out this week. But Ooh. point being, uh, Chris tried to send me a referral to somebody – who was not an ideal client for me. They wanted help and advice or whatever on social media, but they weren't necessarily looking to start a podcast. They just wanted like advice, right? So I said no. 
Uh, so that's that's really not like we're looking for like this specific type of person that's looking to run a podcast. Like that's our ideal client. Doesn't sound like he fits really into that box. So no, I, there's some better places where where I can send him. Let me you know let me help you find somebody else you can send him to. And he was so impressed with that. He talked about it on a couple of other podcasts how blown away he was by how disciplined I was in keeping to my ideal client. Guess who knows exactly what I'm looking for now and is keeping an eye out for me. Uh, that'd be Chris Lockhead, Matt. That'd be I'm, Chris Lockhead. That'd be Chris Lockhead. Right. And, by the way, and, guys, and the reason I got Chris Lockhead is because Matt Aitchison, who hosts the Millionaire Mindcast, by the way, knows what I do and knows who I'm looking for, which is why he sent me a referral to Chris Lockhead in the first place, even though Matt's just a, a you know a friend and connection to the business and not ever has never done any business with us. He, he was on um, an episode of Pursuing Results when we ran that last year, um, but he are. knew what we were looking, what I was looking for, and he sent me a perfect client. So basically, you're telling me, Matt, what we talk about on the show, we actually do in our own businesses. Is that what you? <gasps> the Maybe horror! so. I don't know. I don't know about that. Now, practice what we preach, Greg. That doesn't sound like anybody in real estate to me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not one bit. I just choked on water. <laughs> All right, let's take another question real quick. We've got about 10 minutes. We've got about 15 minutes left. Michelle Grant says, "Help! I just got a call from a seller of a million-dollar property that just expired. He found me on Zillow." So I look like I had a lot of activity in the area and he wants to do an open listing with two or three agents because the exclusive listing quote didn't go well. Um, no, so how no. would you, no. <laughs> how would you handle a Fuck request no. to do an open listing? Fuck no. Okay, Fuck well, hell no. For those that are newer to the business, what's an open listing? It's when you do not have the exclusive listing, which means you can hustle your rear end off. I have, an, I have the non-exclusive listing. Matt comes in and swoops in and brings the buyer in and kicks me all the way out. I have no, I have no recourse. I don't get paid off there all the time and money that I'm, that I put into that thing. So hell fucking no. It is a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of resources. You go work with any other person that, that's out there that's actually going to be committed to you because guys, you bring your time and your knowledge. I have said this so many times, your time and your knowledge, time, no, exclusive listings only and a story. All right. You can partner on a listing, but it's exclusive. So no one else can come in and cut you out and take the money that you worked hard for. Uh, and then your knowledge. He's hiring you because he says, wow, you look like you know what you're doing, but I'm still going to do everything best for me and not and kind of try to screw you out of this. Fuck you. No, not yeah. absolutely not. And if you guys don't get it, I'm, I have an opinion here. A little one. If you don't, if you don't get it, if they don't understand. It's a joke. I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay. All right. Well, here, here's I'm going to give my perspective on this real quick because I doubt that they know the inside baseball of what that really means. What they think that means is three people working equally hard to bring me somebody. Obviously, no. what it really means is that three people not working hard at all and doing nothing uh, because there's no there's no guaranteed reward for the risk. Which, but I, I guarantee you that person doesn't understand that. So if you explain that to them, and you say, look, I'm perfectly happy and and willing willing to have a conversation about co-listing with the right agent if we have complementary skills. Let's say we work different areas and we have different mm -hmm. types of buyers coming in from different areas that might be a good fit for your home. You know, that that happens, uh, you know, not all the time, but regularly enough, you know, That'd like for fine. example, the Playboy Mansion was co-listed, uh, worked out just fine. You know, both of the brokers listed that and did very well. Uh, so I'm open to that conversation, but Mr. Seller, here's what actually happens when you have, quote, an open listing. What you have is that people don't have an incentive to put their their time and their resources and their money on the line because there's no guarantee that if the buyer comes that they'll get anything out of it on the other side in terms of commission. So if you right. would like to for people to if you want to have two or three people working on your behalf actively, then you just have them co-list the property and it's an exclusive listing with two agents rather than an open listing. So you get what you want, which is multiple people working hard for you, but those people have an incentive to put their money and their resources on the line for you. So yeah. you, like I I see what you're saying, but what you're looking for is here's a different route to your goal, which is to have two agents working really hard to get your home sold. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, the reason why I feel so passionate about this, guys, is because when I, early on in my, in my career, I did an open listing. I'm like, did you I'm like, oh, hmm. yeah, that's why. That's we why we're talking about this before. Always, because always with the Pandora's box of newness. It's a, I've repressed the, the horrors oh. of that experience. All right. Hang on. Greg is Greg is getting on the couch for us right now. Oh. He's going to recline a little bit. I've got my yellow right. legal pad out. There we go. Let's talk this right. over. Greg, please tell me how it made you feel oh. to take that open listing. Fucking suck, dude. 
the reason why is that you know the individual that that had the listing he basically what he does what, what they do is they just basically use you for your time and knowledge and then they just leave you high and dry because if they can if what if they bring in a buyer then they can go to an attorney five hundred dollars later they got a contract written and the the attorney kicks it all the way through and you did all the work or another agent comes in and so i had another agent come in and basically just i mean they had a buyer and I didn't have a buyer, so I got X'd out of the deal. And that was like a month or two after we had been working hard on doing open houses, doing all this other stuff. We got ousted. And I said, well, this is stupid. Why would I, why would someone do this? It's like a crapshoot and there's no, and there's no point of, of playing the game because you're not going to get paid. I, I just really don't see the point in it I, at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that you just get bent over and taken advantage of on those types of deals and, Sir, there are certain types of sellers that will gladly do that for you or do that to you because it's their bottom line that they're trying to maximize when you have to understand this is your your business. You have to be you have to be respected, you know, both for your time and for who you are as a professional mm -hmm. and they need to pay you for that. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. Well, let's talk about risk in the sense of getting getting new business. Um because you know that that's one of the things that's that's the the risk that you take with an open listing and and the risk that you take with any listing when you start shelling out hard marketing dollars to list a, to to market a property is you're putting your money and your time and your expertise out there on the line in the expectation that it's going to come back to you in the terms you know in the sense of a closed deal and commission in your pocket. So when you talk about like getting now business, the risk that you're taking when you do kind of all of this scattered marketing and stuff, this untargeted stuff, is you're mm -hmm. putting a lot of time and money and energy and resources out there in the hopes that it comes back to you. But a lot of people put so much of their time and money unknowingly into very low percentage uh, options for getting business. Like we talked about this earlier, like things like online buyer leads, you know, going to Zillow, going to Trulia, not realizing that those people are 12, 18 months out usually from doing anything, buying, mm -hmm. selling, whatever the case is. And so that, that's what we want to talk about, you know, just in terms of like the get now business course. That's why we put this together is to keep you from kind of floundering around in the dark, just doing whatever shiny objects come across your way, because a lot of them will be like that. They require you to risk time, effort, money, resources in the hopes of getting it back. But the timelines for getting it back are probably longer than you are thinking. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to kind of clue you in on, well, what groups of people can you go to? that does have a legitimate shot at getting you now business because it's not everyone. You cannot no. do cold outbound prospecting of any kind, whether it's direct prospecting as in picking up the phone or whether it's lead generation where you're paying somebody else to do it. You cannot go to that market of people that have no relationship with you and no defined clear need and expect to get deals now. I mean, it's literally one in in a hundred that you'll stumble across. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to point out that that when we're talking about like the getting now business, we want to lower your risk. We want to eliminate as much of the risk as possible of you putting your time, money, energy, and your heart into something without that payoff being fast enough. So the two ways that we figured out how to do that is by going after people where there's already some sort of a relationship. So we talk about how to do that, and then it's going to the cold market of people where there's already some sort of targeted need, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we're not talking about picking up the phone and calling expires, although that is one option for targeted prospecting, where we, we limited ourselves to no no cold prospecting, no cold calling, no door knocking, and no marketing budget of over a few hundred bucks a month. And that means, so no, that, that that means no expires. Mm -hmm. No expires, you know, no, none of that stuff, guys. So everything you've been ever taught, really, we're going to unfuck you. And, yep. is, it, and so you don't have to go like, oh, that's what everyone else talks about. No, 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 mm -hmm. no. And I mean, we're, we're I mean, in, you, know, the, you know, the easy stuff, the harder stuff. I mean, I have our I have our outline right here. Oh, look, I'm not mm -hmm. showing the front. I'm showing the back. Why, Matt? Because it's secret. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, my God. So, we're going to talk about how to get buyers at no cost to you. Um, we're going to talk about how to generate and get a raving fan club around you. They want to see you succeed uh, and that will be you know more than willing to bring you. Uh, warm or hot buyers that want to do something within the next one to three months. Matt, I think what was our time frame? Like 90 days to close, wasn't that it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Under 500 dollars within 90 days. Have a check in your hand and no cold calling and no door knocking. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't want to sign up for that? Holy shit balls! And Josh Bryan, appreciate you signing up, player. It'd be good to have oh, you in there, my friend. Yes, absolutely.
No, I'm psyched. Since, yeah, no. Since Josh is really good. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> and that's Josh is a good dude. He's been doing a lot of very, very good stuff um, and is becoming more and more successful. You'll be hearing more from Josh. We'll end up interviewing him on the show about what he's mm -hmm. doing because he's gone from, from new agent uh, to well on his way to being a very successful agent in Chicago um, and partially due to things that he's learned from this show and from Josh Smith and guys like that. And, and like you said, Greg, uh, I wanted to point this out real quick, guys. So I'm going through. I found this book. Psycho Cybernetics, which is a classic by Maxwell Maltz. You, you'll hear a lot of other people refer to this. Tony Robbins refers to it and yada, yada. I'd never read it before. I stumbled across it in a quaint little bookshop this weekend and have already dived into it. It is absolutely amazing. And he makes, he makes the point that our subconscious mind is like a guided missile, right? Which is it, I'll get into action and then you course correct along the way and bam, you'll hit, the, you'll hit your target. So Greg, you made the point about like getting into action and so many people want to sit back and analyze and they want to have everything figured out before they get into action. Mm -hmm. That is the wrong approach. And, and, mm -hmm. this, and this really goes into why that is because your brain is not built to operate like that. No, it's right. Not. Your brain is meant to do one of two things, course correct once you're in action and scan for the problems, the, you know, the answers to solutions from either things that are stored in your own memory or things that are kind of, you would pull from what you call infinite intelligence, which mm -hmm. is what um, Napoleon Hill called it, which is if you want to call it God, if you want to call it the universe, if you want to call it the floating mass of thoughts that other human beings have, like the answer is out there and your brain kind of scans for it, right? Those are the two ways that our subconscious mind helps us to achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. So guys, if you don't, uh, that, that really hit me hard because I am the type, Greg, you are the type where you just freaking get into action and figure it out later. I'm the type that I want to analyze it first and then really attack it. Uh, it. It just hit home for me that get into action, freaking get into action and then let your brain course correct on the way to getting there like a guy, like an interceptor missile, like it's like a heat seeking missile. It will course correct along the way. It may look a little zigzaggy, but that's the point. Like that's how you accomplish goals. So that's what uh, that's what getting out of business is about is just what can you do to get get in action, get moving, start taking action and then course correct along the way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love just jumping and everyone's always like, "Why, God, Greg, I mean, why are you jumping off that bridge? It's huge. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. I'm still going to die if I if I hit the ground. Might as well make might as well make a big splat versus a small splat. And mm -hmm. because I, and because I know for a fact that like the other day I was sitting down writing um, down on, where are the questions? Um, what is it? Getting bigger. What's bigger than big? And you and I were talking about some doing yeah. some things that are bigger than big, like beyond the scope of reality. And, and, you know, with the show and some other things. And um, all of a sudden, I just let my mind go. I took <laughs> the crazy thing is, dude. I want if I ever really want to think, this is so weird. I take two shots. Like two Jack, two Jack Daniels shots, and then I just sit there and I just listen to like trance music, and then all of a sudden my mind will just it like unwraps itself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This is just how it works for me. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, because I relax, I just I'm not I'm not pent up. I'm just like okay, I'm chilled now. Ooh, what about this idea? It's kind of like the Lamaze thing. Not that I'm drinking now, but I mean, all of a sudden, you, like, you, you just let my I am drinking, but <laughs> the water. Water. I'm water. Wow, that was man. We went from drinking Jack Daniels to going to Lamaze class. Oh, you mean that's where you came up with the Lamaze idea? <laughs> yeah, because you were drinking Jack Daniels. All right, I don't know. Anyway, Josh says shots of Jack. Mm, yes, exactly. Uh, I'm more of a Scotch man myself, but I understand. And and Tim Ferriss has said something very similar. So he all like when he's like in his creative space, he he alternates between red wine and yerba mate tea. Like just one a sip of one, then a sip of the other, just for the three or four hours straight. That like that gets him in the zone and then he'll have like a movie playing in the background, but it's always the same movie. Right. So for mm. like the first book project, it was Casino Royale, like just playing in the background and I'll have like one movie that just always plays. And that it's that combination of things he's found that kind of gets him into the zone, into that creative zone where he can access that side of himself and get into flow. So guys, whatever that is for you, tinker around and experiment. There is no right or wrong answer for that. It's whatever works for you. Granted, if it takes 15 beers to get into that zone, well, maybe not the best way to do it. Um, but if it takes you a couple of shots of Jack to do it, go for it. Yeah, I mean, if it oops, remove that. Um, the, the thing is, is the fact that I mean, yeah, don't get shit faced and you know, start writing gibberish, and that's not going to do anything for any anyone. But if you can get to the just relaxed, just chill. Like I, any of you guys that watch me do my 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 um, what do you call it? My 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 prospecting. I always play a certain song at the end, and I'll always play certain songs to get me pumped up and moving in the beginning because it opens my brain and allows me to complete um, you know, the 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 entire process, you know, feeling good and not tense or stressed about anything. 
So figure out what, what your figure out what your go to relaxation is. Where do you allow yourself to let go? And I'll tell you one thing. I mean, all of a sudden, if, if you ask yourself, and I've found this a lot, if you ask yourself the same questions over and 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 over again, continuously asking, it's like a layer of, a coming off of an onion. A little bit's more coming off. A little bit more is coming off. A little bit more is coming off. Finally, you're going to get down to that center core. You can be like, aha. That's the answer. And it will hit you probably in the shower or in the middle of the night. You'll probably sit up like you got shocked, like, oh, I know what it is. Yep. Because you've allowed your brain to go to that infinite reality, infinite intelligence. <clears throat> if you want to read a book that will blow your fucking mind on that kind of a thing, <laughs> read Many, Many, uh, Many Lives, Many Masters. That book is a trip. Really? A, psycholog a psychologist. Um, worked with one of his patients, an attractive blonde lady, he's like in the 80s or something like that. And she had all these phobias and fears. And this never happened before and it didn't happen after this experience. But it went in and she would go into trance, she'd go into a trance, um, well, I guess, you know, a, a, a guided, you know, trance. And mm -hmm. she would describe down to the T different time periods, different areas, different things that she, there's no way she could ever know. And she would die multiple times in, in past lives and it would open up and peel back the different lives that she had lived. And I first started listening to him like, nah, that's fucking bullshit. But, but I mean, he, he says to himself, like, look, I'm not a scientist. I'm, you know, a psychologist and this is my findings. They are only thing I edited was the repetition of some of them, but this is a hundred percent authentic and you take and do what you want to do with it down to the fact where she described to him. Um, well, it goes into the different entities up in the sky and the different layers in the universe and all that stuff. But hmm. she told him about his dead sister that he never told her that he even had a sibling. Hmm. They never had any photos or anything about it. And, hmm. uh, it was, it started with what, it, so what it made me think about is like, like, so you want to get into that different trance, that different point of thinking. Well, hmm. what if you'd have lived a bunch of times? Maybe. Maybe back in the day you were a salesperson and you, and you didn't do well at sales and you're you're afraid of it or something like that. I don't know. Go read the book. Do you believe in past lives, Greg? I didn't until I read this book. I, and then I kind of I became curious to the fact of like, what if it's a real? What if it's what if is it? What if it is real? Hmm. I mean, it, just read the book and you guys make a judgment call on it. If you think I'm a complete whack job, call me a whack job. If you think there's something there, well, maybe there's something there, but you make your own decisions up. But it has to go back to the, the infinite intelligence in the sky and allowing your mind just to go there versus just limiting yourself and staying here in your current reality. Allow yourself to go find the other reality that's out there because it is there. I mean, it is there. Just, yeah, that's, that's one of the it. points he makes in 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 the book Psycho Cybernetics is says when you when you tackle a problem you have to start from the premise that the answer is out there. It says uh, when we set out to find a new idea or to answer a problem we must assume that the answer exists already somewhere and set out to find it. Um, mm -hmm. And and so you, you talk about like asking yourself the same question over and over like that doesn't do any good if you don't acknowledge or believe that the answer is somewhere. If you kind of go mm -hmm. into it with a closed mind, you'll come out with nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. So that really hit me hard too. Like just everything is figure outable. I love that phrase. I think that's uh, Sarah, what's her name that started Spanx, uh, said her dad used to tell her that all the time. She's the, the first Sarah female Blakely. billionaire in the world, Sarah Blakely. Yeah. Blakely. Um, so she said her, her dad used to tell her that everything is figure outable. That was one of his mantras, and she carried that into business, which I thought was amazing. I love that phrase. Everything is figure outable. If you start from that premise, life and business gets a lot easier because, guys, if you if you don't know already, number one, real estate is about being in business for yourself. It's not about working for a broker or being an employee. And number two, being being in business for yourself is about is a, a never ending journey of solving problems. Mm, and so the true. more money you want to make the bigger problems you'll be expected to solve. In fact, that is the direct route to making more money is to solve bigger, hairier, more complex problems. And so it's very important to get comfortable with that. And I've had to get comfortable with that. Um, mm -hmm. You start to get more confidence in your problem solving ability the more that you do it. But starting from that point of, hey, I know the answer's there. All I have to do is find it. Either I've got it somewhere in here or it's somewhere out there, but either way, I'm gonna find it. That will help. I just, uh, fuck, it helps me a lot. Yeah, and it, it, it believe it's it would be self belief. You believe you can do it. Going back to being Dory, you just you just believe you can do it. You don't know anything else. You know we've talked right. about you know objections when it comes to um, getting numbers and names and stuff from people at open houses or at door knocking or cold yeah. calling. So and much you just, of it is just you, you just expect the fact like mm -hmm. yo. So what's your best uh, 
What's your best address again? Or email? You can just look down and just expect it. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Mm -hmm. That's that's another good one. That's funny. That's good scripts to do. But um, <laughs> guys, follow me on Facebook, please. Um, I think I think you have to actually try to friend me. Then it says that you follow me versus friend me because I think that's how it works. But anyways, guys, so go follow me on Facebook if you guys like kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, if you want to see you know more of what I do, like the live prospecting I do uh, Monday through Thursday for most part uh, at 4:30 Pacific Standard Time, where you'll see me execute on. Um, on my scripts and my dialogues and how to communicate with people, I either irate or very nice on the phones. You know, I last week I got uh, the day I didn't want to do anything, guys, was on a Tuesday, not feeling 100%. And I just I told myself, well, I'll, I'll just go home and sit, get in my comfy clothes and get in my couch because I'm not feeling good. Well, I said, no, 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 I have to honor my, my you know, I have to honor you know my commitment to what uh, what you guys you know I tell you I'm going to do. So I got on the phone, Matt. I found three people two of which are buy sells and one of them is just a buy um and so it's just unbelievable if you stay true and you just hustle and grind so follow me there guys uh instagram i'm mcdaniel dot cal mcdaniel dot callahan no it's mcdaniel callahan dot real estate yeah <laughs> whatever you'll find yeah, me that's right uh and then uh reu444 on snapchat which guys i epically suck at so please don't expect a lot from me there <laughs> <laughs> just to be honest. And then Matt, where are the camera? Where can they find you? Follow me on Facebook. Uh, I am pursuing results. That is the best way to find me and connect with me. Okay, so that's super easy. Matt, what do we have coming up on our next shows? Oh man, um, we've got so on Wednesday of this week, uh, we have Michael Young, who's in your neck of the woods. He's in uh, Marin, actually, on the other side of the bay from you. Uh, he has built an insanely incredible business. He's also a real estate investor. He's got like mobile home parks and all kinds of stuff going on, uh, which I believe you called them. What did you call them, Greg? Tin um, cans that spit out money. Tin cans to spit out money. <laughs> so he's going to talk about how to build a no complication business, which is which is fascinating. He's also uh, he's also going to talk a little bit about how he works probate leads. Uh, and how he's built relationships with people that send him business. So you want to talk about like building those high level kind of like relationships with other business owners. So we've got that coming up. That's on Wednesday. Uh, dude, we've got like Michael Lafito's on, on the show next week talking about how to take your very first luxury listing. We've got Marcus nice. Davis from Summit Funding talking about leadership and team building and stuff like that next Wednesday. We've got a ton of stuff going on. Wow, dude, talk about it. A-list, heavy hitter group of folks, man. Mm -hmm. That's why I love what we do, man. We get to meet some seriously awesome people, get to hang out to, you know, together, pick on each other, and just you know, impart good knowledge that, that help people live the life of their dreams. So, guys, as you guys we know, we always say this in every show, and you have to understand that we truly mean it. We do this because we absolutely 100% love you guys. We love hearing the success stories. We love seeing you guys start with little to nothing, but then slowly and then grow with the information that we're providing and other people providing. But the fact is that you put things in action, action and you're not just an asshole where you just keep asking, 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 and you're a huge pit of, of nothingness. You guys are actionable, you know, human beings. And I just love the fact that you guys are here spending your day with us. So thank you. We love you. And um, Matt, you want to put a little bow on this thing and then we'll rock out of here. No, that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes or YouTube, depending on whether you want the video version. If you're on Android, you can also subscribe on Stitcher. Uh, and like I said, go get the book, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. It is amazing. Um, if you do nothing but read the forward and the first chapter, I was telling somebody today, uh, it can literally change your life. This book is a life changer. So guys, go go get it immediately. You will not regret it. It's an older one. It's a classic, uh, but go get it immediately and uh, and start implementing it. Well, I just bought it, so I am mm -hmm. totally going to do it. Good. See, Greg gets into action, and that's why he's successful. <laughs> I did. I'm like, ooh, that's is all it I got to say. But the funny thing is, Matt, I had to wait for you to post the name of it on Facebook. So I'm like, how the fuck do you spell psycho? Uh, I'm like, god damn it, dyslexia. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> We're out of here. And as I always say, peace out, ninjas. We go. <laughs>